G'day cards! Welcome to episode number 48 of the Greencast, a podcast by me, Mr. Green Tex, where I rambled to myself like a madman in my own fucking bedroom. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just a solid body this week. Um, yeah, if you didn't already as well, make sure you listen to last week's podcast, because I had literally one of my top three people that I ever wanted to get on the podcast, uh, Lewis Spears. It was a banger, go check it out. It was sick. But what do I want to talk about this week? i got a few things uh, lined up, so it might be a sort of longer sort of episode, but who knows that sometimes the episodes that I think go on for longest don't. <laughs> um, but one of the first things I want to talk about is I saw Joker this week. Um, I actually saw it a couple days before most of the American audience, because that's just how time zones work for me. <laughs> it worked out really well. I saw it on Thursday, and I'm kind of recording this on the next, on the, that Monday. Um, so, but, yeah, it was really fucking good, to put a start. Unironically, it's really good, and you should actually go see it. But, <laughs> going back to the Australia thing again, it, the experience was sort of mixed for me in the cinema itself, because it was just unfortunate that the film just happened to release in Australia during the school holiday season here. Um, and typically when I go to the movies alone, because I'm a fucking loner and everyone else works and everything else like that and has quote-unquote real jobs, I usually like to go to the cinemas like, you know, fucking 1pm on like a Tuesday or on like the middle of the week or something retarded, where it's literally just old people. And because I have, like, a, a not a typical job, I don't really keep up with school holidays and that sort of stuff. So I showed up and, you know, see all the kids walking around during this sort of time, and I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, it must be school holidays, shit. And uh, in Australia as well, for whatever reason, with video games, for example, <laughs> like, there's always in the there's been the tourist censoring with video games, whether it be, like, Mortal Kombat or South Park or... Heaps of other things. There was, I think, Postal got banned in Australia. Um, there's literal... <laughs> for whatever reason, the films here have a totally different rating system, and it's okay to watch them, where most films are just not rated R in Australia when they are anywhere else in the world. For whatever reason... Joker is rated MA in Australia, which MA, you only need to be 15 years old or older to go see the fucking film. I, literally, like, the last R-rated film I saw? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, no, Hellboy was rated R. <laughs> That's literally the last film that, like, came out sort of recently that actually retained its R rating. Like, you gotta, I don't know what you have to do to get an R rating. Because, like, there was some pretty hefty gore in this film with some uh, death and fight scenes. But, like, you gotta fucking show on, like, full frontal cock nudity or some shit like that to get a fucking R rating. It's absolutely retarded. And so, because it's only rated MA, uh, there are, like, teenagers that are, you know, 15 or older that can get in there by themselves. But because it's also a joker and parents are retarded, and they see an MA rating, they're like, oh, no, it'll be fine. Little Timmy can go see it. Literally, I can guarantee you there was, like, plenty of kids in the fucking screening I went to that were, like, 10 to 12, I'm going to say. Maybe even younger than that. <laughs> there was literally a fucking point in the film where Joker is, is killing someone. And I'm not going to spoil uh, what it is that it that he does to someone, but the death is off screen. <laughs> I literally hear perp up from the side of the cinema. Mommy, what is he doing? <laughs> and like a little high pitched voice. I'm, I had to fucking hold myself, God. Because I was just about to burst into fucking laughter, cunt. Oh my lord. Hold on, let me have a drink. <laughs> and this, there was so many people that, yeah, they're just bored and their kids, and they're like, oh, this must be a good movie. I literally fucking watched uh, a, uh, oh, yeah, also, before it started as well, in the uh, the ad breaks before the film started, there was a mum and son uh, in front of me, and <laughs> the mum pulled out a Coke bottle from somewhere, and she twisted the cap off, 
And I guess she must have shaken it around in her bag or, you know, been walking around with it for a while. Because it shot like a meter up in the air and just sprayed the guy in front of her and just covered her in coke as well. <laughs> Instead of, like, her going out to go uh, get some tissues or, you know, something to clean herself up, she's about to go send a kid out before she realizes, oh, wait, the kid's very much underage and he needs the ticket to get back in. And then she realizes that, oh, he probably won't be able to get back in, so she just has to leave <laughs> instead. Because the kid is so young, he's not going to get back in by himself, because they're not going to fucking believe him. Oh, fuck, dude. There's been so much shit around with this film that it's such a goddamn meme. Especially with the fucking the whole mainstream media thing, where the media is just fucking salivating and just drooling. In the hope that someone commits a mass, like, murder at a fucking screening of this goddamn film. <laughs> it's so fucking sad, bro. And this is why I just don't give a fuck about mainstream media at this point anymore. And why, especially, no one in my generation fucking watches it anymore. I heard someone, like, ages ago say something about the project. And I'm like, couldn't tell you anything about it. Which the project is like a sort of mainstream talk... I wouldn't say talk show. It's more of a like a round table sort of discussion thing that's on like prime time at like seven PM. Absolute cancer. No one my generation watches it at all because yeah, everyone knows that it's just that's kinda of gone out the window with uh with I don't know how to describe it. It's kinda of gone out the window with us sort of like, you know everyone's sort of realized at this point that it's just so manufactured, especially trying to get news stories with the fact that the daily news cycle is so, like, demanding that you just end up just, like, running whatever fucking story. And again, Lord Spears is the perfect example of that. He's been in mainstream media, like, three times on bullshit fucking stories. Ugh. There's one time where he and his girlfriend came in about something or other. That was a good, that was a great fucking example. There was a time he came on the, the news for something. <laughs> what a great fucking story. Nah, but I can't actually remember at the top of my head. But <laughs> there was still some great fucking ruses that he did. There was a time where he got on national radio, uh, pretending to be a gay man, called uh, Alex or something like that. Absolute gold. Fucking inspiring, to be honest. I'd love to do, like, fuck with the media one day like that. But, yeah, back to Joker. It's just, it's just a, such a fucking meme how much of a hysteria that has been manufactured for this fucking film, especially. <laughs> such a goddamn meme. But yeah, long story short, you should go see the fucking film. It is unironically really good. Joaquin Phoenix did just put out an amazing fucking performance in this film, to be honest. And uh, it, again, it sounds like it's... It's annoying because it sounds like such a meme at the same time, but he does deserve an Oscar for this fucking film. It's one of the best performances I've seen, like, all year, or even the past couple years. But I guess that's what was so great, especially about, like, a character-driven film like this, where you have such a small cast, and you can get, like, invested in the one specific person, and you can block them out, and all that sort of stuff in filmmaking terms that I just can't be bothered going into, particularly now that I've started talking about it. But, uh, yeah, no, it's fucking amazing. He knocks it out of the park. Go see the film. Unironically really good. Uh, I'm probably going to go see it again this week because, yeah, I just there's a lot of thoughts. And this just, yeah, it's it really good. Go see. <laughs> um, also, this past week, I saw uh, Ad Astra, which is a, a Brad Pitt space film that there hasn't been much really talk about it at all, but... Honestly, another one of my favorite films for this year. Um, I, f I think I saw one trailer for it and then I completely forgot about it. Because with those sorts of films, I find that it's the best thing to do for myself because I'm just going to go fucking see it anyway, so there's no point looking up the trailers. Joker was different because their trailer was just... It's honestly just one of the best, like, scored trailers and just one of the best paced trailers that I've ever seen. So I was always re-watching that every couple of days. But... It worked out really well for me, knowing about a film that's just like, ah, oh, cool, space, Brad Pitt, cool, you got me, I'm going to go watch it. Because the best case scenario that ever happened to me with this was Arrival. I saw no trailers of this, all I knew about it was there was a couple good big name actors in it, 
and aliens show up, and I'm like, fucking sold. And that was the best thing I ever could have done, seeing no fucking trailers. So, I watched no trailers for this, um, and I thoroughly fucking enjoyed the film. It was kind of a little bit long, there were a couple of plot holes throughout, but shot-wise and composition-wise of the whole film, absolutely fucking beautiful. World-building, aesthetic. Um, but I think what a lot of people had problems with, with that did see a lot of the marketing material, they did use a lot of the action shorter scenes for the film. But when in reality, the whole like sort of thing with that Astra is it's much more psychological and just follows a lot more... Uh, like, father-son themes and, you know, uh, mental... I wouldn't say mental health. I think it's more so just, like, you know... I don't know. I think just psychological is just the best way, I think, to put it, uh, I guess. Because um, the whole brief plot summary of the film is that uh, big-name astronaut man that is sent out to Neptune to do investigations has lost contact and uh, they suddenly contact his son, who is also an astronaut, and they send him on a mission to go reach uh, his father, who they previously thought they'd lost contact with. And uh, so it's, you know, it's a story of, like, him progressing to get to Neptune, and there's a lot of fucking cool world building, because it's set, like, a couple hundred years in the future, and they have stuff like, um, oh, I think it's, I think it's called the Space Elevator? I think it's called, which uh, you can see on like the Kurtz Kazar YouTube channel, which is this really cool concept of like essentially you have a skyscraper that goes all the way to the fucking atmosphere that can make it a whole lot easier rather than having having to need rockets to propel yourself up to the atmosphere. You can just have a fucking literal like almost an elevator that goes all the way up to the atmosphere and save yourself a shit ton of uh, energy. But, yeah, there's some cool, like, fucking explosions and shit like that. Uh, a lot of other really cool concepts of, like, how humanity, pro humanity, humanity progresses and how um, they expand in the solar system and that sort of stuff. And I wish, honestly, they did, like, more of that sort of stuff. But this is, again, one of those sort of films... Oh, this I don't know. I was about to say it's more of those films kind of, sort of like Joker, or it's just focusing on that one particular person and their, like, journey, but there's a lot less fucking cast members on this. But, I don't know. I don't know if I will see it again, because it is kind of a bit of a commitment. It's like two and a half hours, I think. I could probably even ask Google. Hey, Google, what's the runtime for Ad Astra? The running time of Ad Astra is two hours, four minutes. That does not sound right. Hold on. Hey, Google, what's the runtime for Ad Astra 2019? Its running time is two hours, four minutes. Hmm, that does not seem right. It felt a fucking lot longer than that. But, yeah, I think, honestly, they probably could have cut down some parts or maybe even just fucking full on committed and just made it a full-on, like, three-hour film. I'd fucking enjoy that, you know, as long as you market it properly and don't do a dumb fucking action trailer and then get mad when there's only, like, five minutes of, like, space laser fights <laughs> on the moon <laughs> out of a fucking two-hour film. But, yeah, I think that's, again, just one of those, like, you know, marketing people that... I don't know whether they're, like, forced to do that sort of stuff or... You know, that's just all they had, and that's the best sort of material that they thought they could get people with their butts and seats, but... Yeah. I think you should go see it. If you enjoy that sort of sci-fi and space sort of stuff, and you're a fucking nerd like me, you'll definitely enjoy the film, and, you know, just just turn your fucking brain off and just get invested in the world is the best advice that I could give for you uh, if you're going to watch that film. Um, what else did I have written here? Oh, <laughs> yes, this is a good fucking meme that totally went under the radar of, again, like, any sort of media press uh, in Australia. Um, as a bunch of you know, in America, there's, you know, a plenty states that have legalized weed. Uh, in fact, I could probably ask Google now. Hey, Google, how many states in America have legalized weed? I'm afraid I don't understand. 
Oh, bullshit, you don't, cunt. <laughs> I can't be fucked actually typing, so whatever. Yeah, I'm going to just... Half. That sounds right. Um, but in the... Since Australia is under the Commonwealth, it is currently illegal to smoke weed here or even grow or anything else, but <laughs> for some fucking reason, there is now a state in Australia that has passed the law to smoke weed and grow up to two plants. Now, for those who are in Australia that are probably having, you know, thinking about which particular state would legalize weed, the first thing that comes to mind is probably Victoria. And <laughs> you're wrong. Uh, because it's actually the ACT, the smallest fucking state, which, for you international viewers, the ACT is the Australian Capital Territory, which is like our kind of scuffed version of, like, uh, Washington, D.C., I think is the best sort of, like, uh, example that you can compare it to. Or it's essentially just, like, a hub of where all our politicians sort of, like, congregate, and a lot of them also, like, live. And it's literally just this tiny dot that I think is in New South Wales, I think? That sounds right. Um... And a lot of the other embassies and that, or a lot of other sort of stuff. Uh, let me just drink. <sighs> but yeah, they fucking just quietly passed the vote to legalize weed in Australia. And no one's fucking talking about it! <laughs> it's so... Get the, go back to the mainstream media shit. Like, this is what I'm fucking talking about. This is huge news. There's a state in Australia that legalized weed? What? And it's the fucking... The hub of where all politicians live? And the least... The smallest population in Australia? <laughs> of course it fucking is. Of course it's the state where the politicians themselves fucking live where they legalize it. What an absolute fucking meme, dude. <laughs> Tell you what, though. If I was fucking Scott Morris enough... Fucking Australian Prime Minister, I'd want to legalize weed too if I had to run this dumb fucking country. <laughs> what a fucking actual joke, cunt. <laughs> but, see, I, I kind of buried the lead here with the Commonwealth thing because I, I've got an article up here where, like I said, it does uh, the. It'll actually come into effect on the 31st of January 2020. So not that long, particularly. But, <laughs> even though state-wise it'll become legal, because we are part of the Commonwealth, which is like, you know, England and that, a lot of other sort of stuff, uh, <laughs> it'd probably be easier to read it from the article here. It says, uh, Cannabis remains a prohibited substance under the Commonwealth law, and police officers in the ACT will retain the power to arrest and charge anyone with cannabis under the laws of the Commonwealth. And it is possible for the Commonwealth to overrule the ACT <laughs> and have these laws struck out as an inc inconsistent with its own legislation. So even though they pass the vote and they legalize it, the fact that we are also under Commonwealth law... They can also just straight arrest people, and they can just say that means nothing to us because that's not the laws that we follow. <laughs> that's so retarded, dude. Which also makes me wonder, like, federally in America, and like, people could probably tell me this, and I could also probably Google it, but I can't be fucked. Um, but for my American viewers out there, like, isn't weed still federally a crime? But it's still legal in a lot of the other states, which also might be interesting to see. But, uh, and it, it might be a sort of like, I wouldn't say precedent, but what's the fucking word I'm looking for? You know, it might give us an idea of how it might, things might go down here. But, it, again, it's also literally the smallest population possible that they're doing this. And also, it's just literally just the politicians. So they might just tell the police to fuck off anyway. Um, but, you know, I think Colorado was the first state in America that I think got weed legalized, which, yeah, if if this federal police 
Or is it, do you guys just have, like, police that are just run by the state? Do you not have, like, federal police? Like, I think the FBI is, like, federal, but... I don't know. A lot of this stuff, I just don't fucking know. It's, a lot of it is just shooting in the dark, and I don't fucking know, but... <laughs> whatever. I'm sure, I'm sure people will uh, let me know in the comments down below. Um... Speaking of politics, what a fucking transition. Uh, it, some people might have seen that uh, there is an Australian, more political sort of satire YouTube channel by the name of Friendly Geordies, who uh, is currently being sued by uh, Australian meme lord politician Clive Palmer. Now, what did good old Friendly Geordies do to piss off old Clive Palmer here? <laughs> Humble meme merchant, as described by his own Facebook meme page. No, how, how do I how do I put this? He called him a fatty McFuckface and a useless Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fucking Clivey, he's taken person on the internet. To fucking court because he called him a fatty McFuckface. What an actual fucking joke! And I'm just imagining the lawyers having to type out fatty McFuckface in <laughs> in this actual like professional like letter. And there's a bunch of other like names that he's also apparently going you know for defamation for as well. Which <laughs> a lot of that law as well is just like. As, as, especially, like, you can't take someone to court just for calling someone the fucking name. That's not how the law works, retard. But he has a dumb amount of money, which, if you don't know, uh, international listeners might know Clive Palmer as that retard that tried to build the Titanic 2. Uh, also, who tried to build a dinosaur theme park. And also, that guy who tried to run for Prime Minister in Australia and spent $60 million on campaigning, and didn't win a single fucking seat in Parliament. <laughs> because, at the end of the day, see, he tried to do the right thing with trying to appeal with the with the youth, uh, with hemming up the memes, but he's also just... A lot of his policies are just fucking cancer, and, uh... Yeah, he's just... He's not a good dude, at the end of the day. Bit of a meme star, but, you know... Not really someone near what fucking power or parliament, especially when he's, you know, big bidnet man. You know, I mean, <laughs> what am I fucking talking about here? America literally has that over there, but let's not get into that. Orange man bed and all that sort of shit, but <laughs> Club Palmer's just a whole other. At least Trump didn't take someone. Imagine Trump taking some, some dumb on Twitter to fucking court because he called him a name over Twitter. That's basically what we're fucking. What's happening in Australia here? Someone had their fucking... <laughs> Imagine how much shit bloody Donald Trump gets in his fucking replies constantly. And all the fucking ridicule on the names. And one person called Cl calls Clive Palmer a fatty McFuckface in a YouTube video. And he's taken him to court. And even Friendly Geordies himself is talking about how he's very much taking this to court as well. Because he has no fucking nothing to lose here. <laughs> and he's even started up a GoFundMe, which, uh, uh, a GoFundMe or some sort of, like, charity sort of thing, uh, if you want to donate any sort of money so he can actually, you know, defend himself at least somewhat to a degree in court and not just get fucked by his all, all of his lawyers. But that's definitely something I'm going to be keeping an eye out for, which also leads me into another thing. Uh, in the fashion and keeping up with all of these, uh, fucking dumb Facebook events. There was obviously that Area 51 stuff, um, but before that, there was a lot of the viral ones that went, like, scream like Goku in front of X, uh, public, uh, monument or whatever the fuck else. Uh, after Friendly Geordie's video came out, someone started up a Facebook event called Stand Out the Front of Clive Palmer's Office and Call Him a Fatty McFuckhead. Now, <laughs> it's definitely not to the extent of size of the Australia, uh, the Area 51 raid, but it currently has 1.6 thousand people interested in going to the event, 
and apparently 290 have RSVP'd saying that they are going, which I don't know how fucking many there will be that'll go, but I am so fucking tempted to go down there just to film it and see what sort of people turn up to this, and maybe even interview a few people. I feel like that'd be a fucking great video to get out of it. Problem is, I can't convince any of my friends to go down with, with me and film it, which is kind of fucking annoying, so it might just be a sort of commando uh, POV sort of thing, so... But I really do want to film this, because it sounds like such a great fucking meme, and oh my lord, if it actually comes out, or if the police show up, this I just want to see this go down. Because uh, you just know there's going to be media attention there as well. <laughs> so, I better bring my bandana and be a little bit anticlimactic. Anticlimactic? What am I talking about? Is this is what I'm talking about when you're rambling you f- by yourself doing a fucking podcast. You just, like, say things and it's just like, oh, that makes absolutely no sense and that sentence did not even form the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> see what I'm talking about? You get a bit insane as well because you want to keep it keep it up the entire time because you don't, also don't want dead air. Um, but uh, I, the only dead air that I will have is this water that I'm about to drink. <sighs> um, oh yeah, one of the last things I wanted to talk about as well, and I was talking to Lewis a little bit about uh, a couple of weeks ago was that uh, I am potentially looking for an office space uh, to move my sort of workflow into. Like, I've got the 3D printing stuff and uh, the YouTube stuff especially. So I think it'd be absolutely great to have, like, a dedicated space where I could actually go to to actually work. Because at the moment, the sort of work-like balance is kind of really weirdly skewed. Uh, at the moment here, and it's kind of hard to separate sometimes, especially when you have a a big online presence. Well, I wouldn't say big, but uh, you have a reasonable online presence like myself. It is kind of hard to separate that work-life balance, I guess. And that's what it is, sort of like uh, envious to a degree of like 9 to 5 jobs, because you can just clock out and just not think about it. But someone like me, you know, checking through Twitter or, you know, doing social media stuff that still kind of counts to a degree so it'd be great to have like you know move my workshop over there move all my fucking computer shit over there and but the more i think about it the more i'm worried about stuff like theft having to get insurance rent especially because there was a place that i was looking to that was like 10 by 10 meters there's about 300 bucks a month which looked really good but the front the uh, the front of the building is just entirely like a glass wall, and I don't want people fucking looking in, uh, watching me, or, you know, even just looking in at the fucking place and seeing all of this equipment and workshop gear, because then that's just inviting for fucking theft, so... Warehouse space would be nice, but a lot of those start at, like, a grand a month, and I just can't fucking afford that. Maybe, like, this time, like, last year, maybe, with fucking YouTube when my views were, like, double or triple what they were now, uh, maybe I could afford it then, but, I don't know, I just, I just can't afford it at the moment, and it's just kind of really annoying at the same time, but, you know, I guess I'm just, I have, I've looked for literally, like, half an hour to an hour at a lot of, uh, spaces that I can rent around me, so who knows, I'm going to probably continue looking in the next couple of days, and, you know, weigh the, weigh my options here, and see if it is really worth it, and I can actually afford it, especially with also having to get unseen costs of things like like insurance, like getting security installed, and, you know, security cameras, and da-da-da-da, and everything else like that. So, we'll fucking see, I guess. (laughs) Alright, I guess it's time, that time of the podcast, where I uh, dubbed the most autistic part of the podcast, and that is, of course, where I answer questions from you cunts. So, if you want to send me any questions, queries, or anything else like that, uh, if you want to remain somewhat sort of anonymous, or any other stories that you think I might enjoy, uh, please do send it to mrgreentext at gmail.com. Uh, that's Mr. Green Text with an S on the end of that, because a lot of people forget that, and even I did on my own fucking YouTube channel for so long. Um, give me a minute while I stall and lock into my Gmail, because I think I've got a couple things here. 
to read out. Doobity do, a lot of Twitch stuff. Oh yeah, go fucking follow me on Twitch. I swear I had some stuff here. Uh, receipts, nope, nope, definitely not it. Oh, okay, yeah, we got one here from a uh, regular contributor, uh, Tati. Uh, and she just says, in the States, my little cousin's got some little collectible mini store items too, which I guess in America now... Uh, they've kind of copied us and are now doing the sort of like mini shop things like I did a video on my channel go check that out um, Yeah, it's, it looks like a bunch of like sort of America sort of brands of little mini like warheads And I'll, I mean the pictures on screen now so if you're listening to this on audio uh, check Jump on the uh, or the YouTube version because there's a picture on screen now looks like some warheads and some other like warhead sort of products. Yeah, that's whack I do wonder if that actually was a copy of the, of the cold stuff it is. I'm going to assume that it absolutely fucking is. <laughs> uh, I think that's all I had for email-wise, but I actually had quite a few questions come through on my Discord, which that's the main boy where I'm answering questions from as well. Uh, let's see. Talk about Greta Thunberg. I don't want to, because <laughs> the people are just boomers. Uh, Willery says, new contest when? Oh, yeah, uh, I've been thinking about that. Um, again, I don't, I know this podcast doesn't get a lot of views and whatever the fuck else as well, but I've been thinking of doing a Discord contest of, uh, video editing of some sort, whether it be, like, After Effects or, uh, just straight, like, Premiere or whatever the fuck else you want to do. Um... So, let me know if you think that's a, a good idea. I'll make some sort of, like, green screen sort of... Actually, yeah, that might even be a good idea. Do some, like, s sort of iDub sort of style meme stuff that people can, like, edit into whatever the fuck they want. And I feel like that would make a great video as well. And also just great marketing for myself as well. Just getting the memes out there as well. So let me know. But yeah, I definitely think I might even do that at some point. Um, so potentially... What is it? I think I might try and do it this month. We'll see. Uh, Bax15 says, do you still enjoy YouTube? Uh, yeah, I've definitely, since I've changed things up with the not as frequent uploads, it's definitely become a lot easier on my end, that it's not as stressful to a degree. Um, it's, I kind of had to change up a lot of my workflows with, uh, post, uh, especially, because now I, I can't afford longer videos to get demonetized or flagged anymore, so I have to make a video preferably longer than 10 minutes and then upload it and then submit it for review, uh, whether it just be putting it, because literally what I do to get it pinged to submit for review is I literally just type in penis sex war and then it gets demonetized and then I request for review and then change the title back to what it originally was. And uh, I'd say it's probably about... 80-20 at this point, whether it gets monetized or demonetized. 80 meaning monetized. Um, and if it gets demonetized, just delete the video. Censor the first 30 seconds of swear words, and it seems to get through again. Which is an annoying process, because it no longer means that I can, like, upload a video uh, without, you know, I can schedule it for this specific day. Because I now have to wait for requests. Which, depending on what time it is of the week... Uh, I might be fucked, and the longest I've waited is five days for a video to get fucking reviewed, and it was absolute cancer. So yeah, it's kind of, and I'm trying to do at least like one to two videos, longer videos a week now, uh, with the podcast included into that potentially. Um, so yeah, it's kind of fucked me a little bit, but it also taken a little bit off my edge, I guess, to a degree, because I definitely enjoy doing the longer sort of ones, because I can mix them and do a lot more sound uh, stuff in, like Bonzi was so fun to do the uh, the sound mix with all the special effects, but it's also becoming incredibly difficult to find the longer green text at the same time as well, so, I don't know, and I want to do some more spooky green text uh, this year as well, but yeah, I don't know, I still do enjoy it, because at the end of the day, even though I'm a green text YouTuber or whatever the fuck else, I don't really want to consider myself a green text YouTuber, but uh, literally, this YouTube channel is 
gotten given me so many opportunities that I wouldn't have had if I didn't have this channel, which even though that I do do this sort of content, I've gotten into uh, giant charity gaming live streams. I I met my first girlfriend through a fucking charity gaming live stream. I uh, I'm joining a bunch of other uh, YouTube sort of stuff. I'm in a couple of other YouTube communities now. Uh, I've I've talked to and done podcasts with some of my favorite Australian stand-up comedians and some of my favorite Australian YouTubers. And it's so fucking weird to me, bro. Especially when I'm, like, one degree away from a lot of, like, the biggest YouTubers that I've been watching for majority of my uh, teenage life. Like, <laughs> when... I think it's I think it's in the podcast when Lewis is just like oh yeah when I was t- texting Max Mofo when he wake wakes up and I'm like what the fuck what am I I'm one degree from Max Mofo here what the fuck is happening here <laughs> like it's so weird like it's literally like any sort of drop you have of like I don't know drop of clout is the right word but you know if, as long as you can you have some sort of personality that you can use to drive. You can, as long as you have a bigger sort of community and you have that personality that you can back it up with, uh, doing other sort of content like Twitch or anything else, for example, like it can still be really fucking enjoyable. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a long with an answer uh, of saying that I, st- yeah, I still do enjoy it. <laughs> what else we got here? Uh, traps are gay, yes, da 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 da. What if a trap is a girl that looks like a boy? That's, what? It's still fucking gay, it's got a penis. Uh, chin reveal, no. <laughs> uh, if you could visit any planet outside our solar system for one day, what would it be? Um, I don't know, a fucking planet that I can breathe on that we haven't discovered yet? That'd be fucking lit, dude. Give me some fucking equipment that I can use to, like, document it. That'd be fucking lit, bro. Pro- I mean, someone said the Andromeda Galaxy. That was actually what I was thinking as well. But, I don't know, a planet that I can breathe and not immediately fucking die on? That sounds like it'd be absolutely fucking amazing, dude. <laughs> like, imagine that, like... Outside, yeah, outside our solar system, like, fuck Mars off. Get me to a, a planet that I can actually breathe on, because the amount of planets out there, I can guarantee you there's one with an oxygen level that we can actually breathe and sustain ourselves on. So, yeah, fucking send me to that place, bro, because I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like, to be honest. <laughs> Does Australia exist? Yes, shit meme. Uh, current state of Israeli government. Yeah, I don't really want to get into that. Uh, what is your opinion on the Hong Kong protest slash China USA trade war? I have not done nearly enough research to even give a fucking opinion on that. Uh, and then the cooler lady Ebo uh, says, "What's your favorite Pokemon?" Kind of a cop answer, but it's probably Charizard. To be honest, it's the first one that comes to mind always. In fact, that's a lot of people's like go to, but. I don't know, man. I've always liked Charizard. Pokemon Red was the first game I ever fucking played. And Charizard was my boy. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's on the podcast there, I think, actually. <laughs> I really want to go get lunch. And I'm going to go skating with my friendos uh, this afternoon as well. So I need to go get some other stuff for that as well. But yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. If you made it the whole way through this almost... 40 minute podcast is not overly that long <laughs> like I said um, yeah be sure to let me know in the comments down below by including the word weed because uh, yeah I want to hear some people's uh, you know opinions about that uh, do you smoke weed is it legal in your state uh, tell me about the police like I asked before um, is it federal is it police only by state uh, have you been busted for weed you know if you include the word weed or doobie or whatever the fuck variation that you want to uh, make it uh, I'll give you a little comment a heart and uh, yeah thank you guys so much for watching uh, and listening and whatever else uh, and I'll catch you later a cunts